And welcome back, yet another MiG-21. This is the MiG-21S, 9.7 in the Russian tech tree. It is the new premium variant and it has a pretty nice camo. Your main armament will be the GSH-23 as the missiles are not very reliable. They can get you some kills, but as you will see in this footage, I'm gonna get 7 kills in the first game and 6 of those will be the gun. So keep in mind, if you aren't a very good shot and you are not very familiar with top tier i do not recommend buying this thing as your first jet it's not extremely easy it is extremely unforgiving if you know how to fly this thing is pretty damn strong because it does have the mf engine that's the 10.3 variant mig at 9.7 making it pretty strong but you do lack the missiles and you don't really have the most stopping power should this thing be 9.7 probably not but with the current missile loadout at 10.0 or higher it's also going to be borderline useless it is very similar in the way you fly it as the SPS that I made a video on the other day as well. But you will lose the missiles and you'll get two more of them. But they're going to be a little bit less potent. And reversing an FOC like right here isn't the hardest thing in the world. But I needed some footage to talk about at the intro before we actually get into a normal matchmaker. He's going to be spinning out. I hit him again and I get another hit. And he's going to be trying to sparrow me in the flat spin. And he actually manages to get one off. Luckily that wasn't a sparrow E2. But going into the game, I like to just kind of go straight in, depending on the matchmaker, depending on a whole lot of things. So I can't really give you a rule for that thing. You kind of have to just figure that one out for yourself. What do you like? You have engine power, you have good speed, but you do bleed a lot of energy. I like to go for the F-105s at the start here. They isolate themselves pretty much because they are going for the bomb bases. So I can come in here, maybe kill one or two before they actually go RTB or they start going fighter mode. Because fighting those things, as you saw in yesterday's video, they are pretty annoying and they are extremely fast and they will outrun you. So it's very hard to actually play around them once you start having the carry. But right here there's one very slow. So I'm just going to be parking on the 6. I'm not really too worried about the guy behind me. Because I am much more maneuverable and I do have the acceleration to just get away from it. He starts cancer rolling. So I shoot a second little burst into him. Hits his engine. He says, honey, I'm home. And he plants it into his house. And that's going to be kill number one. Looking around here, F-105s behind me are not going for me, so I have a little bit of a wiggle room here. And there's a lot of guys ahead of me, and the AV-8 is coming towards me, two of them are. But I will go for the right one, he's a little bit closer, and I can turn out now and leave the area again. Because I don't want to be in that furball right now. I don't have any oversight here, I don't really know where everyone is, and there's an F-4C on top of me. So I want to be someone in the clear, I want to get my footing back, and I want to see where everyone is. I run a full uh, tank of fuel on this thing. Just because I do have the performance, I'm not really worried about turning, I'm worried about acceleration and speed, and I will be using that quite a bit. And because of that little bit of a slower playstyle that I use, because I do have the power to do that, I'd rather have more fuel, because in the end that was the limiting factor to me. for me. The gun has been working quite well for me, the missiles not so much, but I don't really rely on them anyway. So I kind of just try to get them off as fast as I can on anything that I can maybe get it off on. I get a missile lock here. I notice that uh, he's trying to notch my missile, or he's not trying to, he's notching my missile here. Probably an accident because he's paying attention to the guy on the 6. And now we get a solid lock, we shoot the missile off, and that is going to track. Sure it tracks, but it doesn't pull in enough. I didn't lead the missile enough, making it under lead a little bit, and it's going to blow up right behind him. And I have two more missiles left, so I'm going to shoot one right now. He he's notices me, he knows that I'm there. So I'm going to shoot one more missile at him in the hope that he's not paying attention, that he's at high altitude, and he, he dodges. And at this point, I'm like, I need to break off, I need to go for them. So I'm going to send him one last parting gift. I'm going to be locking him up, and I'm going to be shooting the missile straight. He might think that it's not actually going to pull in. And it looks like it worked. He is flying straight. Unfortunately for him, that missile was pulling in. Down he goes. Now we turn around. F-105 down. That's one of those planes you don't really want to fight late game. As I mentioned early on. Because they are just, they are so damn fast. And if there's someone else around, he can stay untouchable. You don't really have missiles to kill them with. Unless of course you can trick someone like that. And they are just going to be running. And there's very little you can do about it. Unless you manage to hit the head on. But... Even in the head-on, they have the advantage. They have 1,000 rounds of that Vulcan, which has a lot more range, a lot more velocity. And it's just all around easier to use. FOC here is stuck in a dogfight. There's also two enemies on our 6 somewhere. We're not sure where they are right now. And this FOC is essentially stalling out. So that's not going to be the hardest kill. Shoot a few rounds. Down he goes. AV-8 coming in. I'm going to be presenting myself here, but I'm going pretty fast still. 
And what I want to do is I want to stay above his top speed just under Mac for me because climbing in Mac is a little bit inefficient. So I like to try stay around 0 0.98, 0 0.99. And I'm just going to be maintaining that speed in a climb. And at that point there's very little he can do. He can try to go straight up and use the fact he has that very good low speed acceleration. But the AV8 performance at high altitude is not very stellar. And his high speed acceleration is also not very stellar. So as long as I keep it fast I can just climb up after him just like this. And if I'm on the 6 of an AV8 as long as he doesn't actually start using his vector controls. He shouldn't be posing that much of a threat. Sure he can start using his VTOL stuff like that at a really low speed but at that point he should be dead already we're going 900 now i'm catching him slowly and i'm just going to be sticking on a six and if he tries to vector if he tries to veto me i can just disengage and run away i'm not really worried about a harrier he's just trying to flat turn he's trying to flare as well shoot a little burst crit his entire vehicle he's not really doing that well second burst into his wing and down he goes kill number five Still 84 rounds left and we're going to make good use of that because that's going to be two guys coming from the runway. So we dive out a little bit here because I did burn a lot of speed. And there come the two enemies for the end. F4C as well as an T2. And both of these planes are not the biggest threat. The F4C is faster than me depending on his loadout. But I don't want to go head on with that because he is shooting from a further range that I can actually fire at. And I don't have the most amount of ammo. So now I'm in a little bit of a pickle. I want to pitch up but I don't know what the T2 is doing. And at this point I'm like I should have done it. Because the T2 did a very slow turn. I was expecting him to turn quicker for me. And I could have easily pitched up here. And killed the FOC so that Razor could regain his energy. Now I want to do it anyway. But I noticed that I'm just going to be turning into him. So instead of that I'm just going to try to pitch the FOC down. So that Razor can dive out. Because I don't want the T2 to go for him. So F4 doesn't break. Doesn't stick on me. Hoping that a T2 will go for me. So I'm going to be going for the head on. Or trying to, to give him the idea that I am. But the T2 breaks off and goes for Razor. FLC is coming down at this point. And Razor said he hit him again. So I'm like do I go for it? Nah I'll, I'll let him go. He's diving out. So he's probably not going to be much of a threat. So I can just kind of stick on the T2 here. And make sure that Razor actually survives the engagement. Razor gets even more hits. F4 is doing pretty badly at this point. And I'm just following the T2 right now T2 is very slow I get the first hit in and I don't want this guy to pitch up for us and start hosing us down both of us so I'm sorry but I'm gonna steal it in the end anyway because I'm not gonna be going after this T2 maybe miss the shot maybe get unlucky and then we are both hanging from the sky here and getting hosed down from 1.2 km by the Vulcan but at this point it's only the T2 he's completely crit and for me at this point he is just hanging from the air not the hardest shot in the world take him down and that's seven kills with 155 rounds pretty good on to the next game or the game before it actually this was the second game i played in the mig 21s and also one of the more representative representable ones english is hard so first of all and again i'm gonna be going for the f105s because they are mostly going for bomb bases that are mostly busy with something else shoot a few rounds in the head on take his wing tip off and I'm just going to be ignoring him because he is not going to be doing anything the rest of the match. See an AV8 again. And it's again an AV8 that I will be going for next. I just want to make sure that I don't die in the head on. Very bad angle. Don't want to take it. Don't want to waste my ammo. So I'm just going to be dodging the head on. Getting out of the way. And going on for the next guy. F105 here is going pretty slow. So I want to focus on him. But the FOC coming in from the right side here. Who is probably going to go for the guy on my left. My teammate. The MiG-21 SMT. And he is. So instead I will try to gun him down. Underlead a little bit. Because these guns aren't very fast. Miss him. And the F-105 is now turning in. I can't even get my gun on that one. Not sure why I even shot. But no big deal. We still have 159 rounds. Looking around now, I'm just trying to keep my speed up a little bit here. I want to go back to at least 0.9 mag. And I'm going to be zooming around the map. F8E is here. As well as an F3H, which I'm not really worried about. But the F8E is a little bit dangerous. But he breaks off, he goes for someone else. He's going to get a very quick aspect on the MiG-21 in my team. But the F3H is dead on the 6 of a friendly. So, instead of going for the F8E, which was a higher priority target, I will go for the F3H. Simply because he is occupied and he is going for a teammate. So I make him break off. We shoot a few rounds. We miss him. 
shoot a few more rounds. I'm just sitting on a 6 and he is just trying to get rid of me. But the F3H is one of those really sad planes that you can't really do much in. I am zoomed in here a little bit. I'm uh, tunnel vision a little bit. Keep in mind I have a lot of teammates around me. They're all spotting everything. Waiting for the guy to roll into my guns and he does. So I don't really have to look around that much. I know that everyone was pretty far away. I can still see them on the map. So as long as I don't see them moving towards me. I won't really worry about it. He rolls in. He just rolls out of the way. Don't manage to connect the gun. And here is the Jaguar. Also a plane that I don't really want to deal with. And that's simply because of again the A9Gs. And these are some of the stronger missiles at the BR. He rolls out of the way. Just a little bit too high. He's very slow. Making it a pretty hard shot in that very small time window. So instead... We are not going to be sticking on him because it's going to make me very slow. And instead I will go for the different targets here. It's an F4C as well as the F8E. So I'm going to be turning around. This guy is going pretty slow. Not sure how badly he is damaged or what he is doing. But I don't want him to make it back to base. So I'm just going to tap him out of the air real quick. And again we are just trying to find opportune targets. And we are just trying to find vehicles that I want dead the most. And the F8E is the next on that list. Or the F4C on the right there. I luckily also have a lot of teammates around here. But you really just fly this thing like a vulture. And I can't really tell you how to do that. I can't really give you a one-to-one -one guide on how to play this vehicle if you have bought it. And I think if you have experienced a top tier, you kind of know what to expect. And me telling you, fly this thing like a vulture. You have to just pick out your targets. You have to just kind of find your place in the match. Not the game, but every match is a little bit different. And you just have to find where you want to be at the right time and you're not going to be doing that every game some games you won't be getting many kills and especially in something like a 1v4 1v3 or even a 1v2 in this thing if they are in good planes you don't have the missiles to quickly kill them and go on to the next one you need to go pretty slow you need to connect your shot and because of that you likely are going to be stuck in this 2v1 and you drain a lot of speed in the 2v1 because when you start turning you are a delta you do bleed a lot of speed and you don't want that you don't want to be without speed because you are just going to get your shit rocked and that's not what you want so fly this around like a vulture try to find opportune target try to find people that you want to go for and of course at the end of the day it all comes down to your aim if you cannot aim this plane you are not going to get kills or at least not many of them you can try to use the r3s at high altitude in the head-on and especially at early game you will get a few kills with them because not a lot of people will actually expect it because not a lot of people run the radar missiles especially at 9.7 where many of the vehicles have never seen a radar missile. It's starting to become more and more common and people are starting to catch on. But as we know with the war tunnel community, it sometimes takes a little bit for people to actually catch on for that stuff. So I lock on the guy here. I'm going to be trying to get uh, one of the radar missile kills in. But I'm noticing he's starting to notch me. And the F5 has a very small radar cross section. And there we go. He's notching it by simply turning in. Try to get the missile off. We don't manage to hit it. But I am going to dogfight this guy. I only have 10 minutes of fuel left. He just took off. So I'm going to be a lot lighter here. At least relatively speaking. So even if he is running min fuel. I should be on roughly the same. So I'm not really worried about it. This shot I won't be going for. Because I will be getting a very nice one. In the turn after here. Here we go. Going pretty slow. Right to my gun side. And down he goes. And now we can start engaging back for the other guys and the reason i waited for that shot was because i wanted to conserve my ammo because there's again still two enemies left and i want to kill both of them because i'm greedy like that so we start diving out i'm going to be running half after burner again the tip with the scroll wheel set it on 100 scroll up once and it will engage about half of your after burner making the acceleration and your top speed a lot higher without the insane after burning fuel consumption that you would have normally so Aviate, I'm hoping for him to go head on, but he pulls in a little bit late, so I can't use the missile. So we are going to start dogfighting with the Jaguar. In the hope here that I can get the shot off, he rolls down below my gun. And I'm not going to be sticking here. I'm not going to be caught up in the dogfight, because the other MiG-21 is very far away. And the Aviate is now 3 kilometers behind me, which is almost in range of the missile. And if I had stuck on that Jaguar a little bit later, either the Jaguar or the AV-8 could have actually shot me down with one. And I don't want that. I want to win the game. The plan was to just very quickly get a kill on the Jaguar and then try to 1v1 the AV-8. But unfortunately for us, 
the AV-8 spaced himself out in a way that I couldn't actually engage both of them at once. And then they opt to just both go for the runway. Both of them just took off, they are full fuel, we didn't exchange any blows, full ammo. And they decide to just turn around for the airfield. I, I'm still puzzled by this kind of playstyle. The AA then took down some of my teammates. Very enjoyable experience altogether. I had the RTB because I didn't have the fuel to loiter around the airfield. So after rearming, we are back in the fight here. I tried to lock on the Jaguar and the Heddle. I lock on the CL, he dodges my Heddle, and I try to do the same to him. He recommits to the Heddle like he should. And then the AV-8 here is simply too slow to do anything. So after ignoring the Harrier or ignoring the Jaguar, I will just gun down the Harrier. And now we can 2v1 the Jaguar again. Jaguar really opts to just stay on my six and I'm just outrunning him. Not sure why he's still trying to stick on me because I'm clearly not turning around. The MiG-21 in the meantime is simply turning on his six because he's so busy trying to look at me. And now we can just pincer him. He has a MiG-21 on his six. He needs to go defensive. He needs to bleed even more speed in his Jaguar. And he's slow enough so that the other MiG-21 can just gun him down. And that's all I have for you today. Probably going to be one of the last MiG-21 videos in a while. Other than maybe the German one again because it goes all 60s now. Hope you enjoyed it. A for E tomorrow. See you in the next one.